Hello, welcome to the video on composite functions. This will be a lesson on this topic. And composite functions are very similar to um, almost exactly like function operations. As a matter of fact, it is a type of function operation. So it goes without saying that you want to make sure you understand the basic function operations and take a look at the lesson and example sets before you take a look at uh, composite functions. Um, this seems to kind of confuse students when they first learn about it. So I'm going to do my best to try to make it, um, you know, pretty straightforward and easy to understand. But, um, you know, you also want to make sure you practice the example sets and maybe, you know, watch the lesson two or three times so you really understand this. But it's really important when we talk about functions. Okay. So our objectives is to basically find the composite of two functions. Okay. Composition of two functions. So what are we talking about? Well, we have two functions here, f of x and g of x. Now, if you recall, I could take f of x, let's go ahead and just take it down here for a second, and I can evaluate f of x with some number. Okay, so if I told you to find f of 2, what would you do? Okay, well, what you would do, you would take that 2 and you would plug it in where the x is at using parentheses. So it would be 3 times 2 plus 3. So you would have 6 plus 3 or 9. So f of 2 is 9. <clears throat> and you would be correct. So we can do, um, we can of course evaluate functions with numbers um, as long as the numbers are in the domain of the function. But we can also evaluate functions with variables. So I'll show you how that works. So if I have g of x, and g of x is equal to negative 4x minus 1, what if I told you to find g of t? Okay, what do you think that would be? g of t. Okay, so you would take this t, just as we took the 2, we replaced it with the x. You're going to take this t, and you're going to replace the x with the t. Just how you replace the x with the 2, we're going to replace the x with the t, and you would have g of t. So it's really not that difficult. So we have negative 4, parentheses, t minus 1. So you would have negative 4t minus 1. So hopefully you're getting the kind of general idea here. How about this? Go ahead and write another one. Let's continue to use this f of x function. What if I had f of 2x? Okay, what do you think f of 2x is? when we're talking about this function right here. Why don't you take a moment to see if you can figure that out. Okay, so the regular function itself, let me write this this way, f of 2x is right here. All right, and f of x is equal to 3x plus 2. Okay, so we're just going to follow the pattern. We're going to replace this x with what? With 2x. And then we'll simplify. So it's going to be 3 parentheses, 2x plus 2, and we get 6x plus 2. Okay? So hopefully you understand what I'm talking about here. You understand how we can evaluate functions with um, um, variable and variable expressions. Okay? And come up with whole um, new um, uh, expressions. Okay? Like here, f of x turns out to be, f of 2x, excuse me, turns out to be 6x plus 2. Here we had um, g of t turned out to be negative 4t minus 1. These are all different things you could do with functions. Now, let's get to a composition of a function. So if you, just, if you understand what I just did and um, able to, uh, to provide those or actually work out those particular um, function operations, you're not going to have a problem understanding a composition of two functions. So here we have, this is called f of g of x, okay, f of g of x. This is a composition of two functions. And what you're doing is this. Let's look at the f of x function again. f of x equals 3x plus 2, okay. Now we saw Whatever we plug in here, we're going to plug in there, correct? So whether it's 2, we're going to replace that x with a 2. But what we're going to plug in is the g of x function, okay? And what's the g of x function? Negative 4x minus 1. So really, this expression right here is saying, okay, we're going to plug in a negative 4x 
minus 1. Okay, what is that? So we're going to replace this x here with this and simplify. So it would be 3 times negative 4x minus 1 plus 2. Okay, and this negative 4x minus 1 is the g of x function, correct? So this is going to be equal to, let's simplify it, this would be negative 12x minus 3 plus 2 or negative 12x minus 1. Okay, so f of g of x is negative 12x minus 1. Now we never write it like find f of negative 4x minus 1. We don't do that. What we do is just say, hey, find f of g of x. Okay. Although these two here are the same, we always use this notation. All right. So f of g of x is negative 12x minus 1. Okay. But you can see here that we're really plugging in that g of x function using parentheses. And that's the composition of two functions. You're evaluating one function. Okay. Remember, evaluate means plug something in and figure it out, simplify. You're, evalu you're evaluating one function with another function. That is a composition of two functions. All right, so let's go ahead and do another example. So let's see if you can set this one up. Okay, instead of finding f of g of x, this time we're going to do g of f of x. So go ahead and set that up. So we're going to be plugging in the f of x function in for inside the g function. Okay. All right, so the g function in and of itself is what? Negative 4x minus 1. So this x here, we're going to plug in the f of x function. Okay, so this x right here, we're going to plug in an f of x function. So you're going to plug 3x plus 2 in for that using parentheses and simplify. So g of f of x is equal to a negative 4 parentheses. Now I'm going to plug in my f of x function. Okay, I'm going to plug it in right here. That's going to be minus 1. Okay, so my f of x function is 3x plus 2. So now let's go ahead and simplify. We get it's a distributive property, negative 12x plus negative 8 minus 1, or negative 12x minus 9. That's g of f of x. Okay, so if you successfully got that right, then you're able to do really all of these of these problems. It can be a little confusing, and, and um, of course, it can be a little bit challenging when you're trying to simplify, um, and you need to have those skills combining like terms, the distributive property, etc. But if you understand the core concepts here, then all the problems are going to be just like this. Okay, let's go and try some more examples. All right, so I have two different functions here, so I'd like you to find f of g of x. Okay, so this time I'm going to plug in the g of x function, which is this. I'm going to plug it in right here and there, okay, inside the f of x function. <clears throat> so go ahead and set that up. All right, so f of x all by itself is 3x squared plus x. But instead of x right here, I'm plugging in the g of x function. So I've got to plug in these x plus 2 expression. So f of g of x is going to be equal to 3 parentheses x plus 2 and parentheses squared plus x plus 2. Okay? So this x is being squared. Okay? So I'm plug I have an, my x plus 2 squared and then I have my x plus 2. Okay? See how that works out? All right, now let's see if you can go ahead and simplify this. And this is where some students have a tough time. Okay, they're able to plug in correctly, but then now their algebra skills, dealing with polynomials and um, the like, uh, trip them up. So let's see if you can get this right. Okay, the first thing you have to do, remember the order of operations, you've got to do powers first. So x plus 2 squared, let's use the FOIL method, we'll do it over here to the side, is x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. <clears throat> so we'll simplify that. It's going to be 3 times. All this will turn out to be x squared plus 4x plus 4 parentheses plus this x plus 2. Okay. 
let's go ahead and keep working this down. And this will take some time, so don't try to rush this. I'm going to distribute the three now, okay, to each term of that trinomial. So it's going to be three x squared plus twelve x plus twelve. Okay, now I have my x plus two over here, and I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. Let's see, I only have a 3x squared, so I'll write that here. I have a 12x and a 1x, so that's 13x plus a 12 and a 2 is 14. Okay, so if that's what you got, you correctly found the uh, composite of f of g of x, the composite function f of g of x. All right. Let's go ahead and wrap it up on this one here, give ourselves some room. And this time we're going to find g of f of x, same functions. All right, so we're going to plug in here. We're going to plug in the f of x function, okay, right there. All right, so this is the f of x function. So go ahead and set that up. So the g of x function by itself is x plus 2. All right, but instead of this x, I'm going to plug in the f of x function. So g of f of x is equal to parentheses 3x squared plus x plus 2. So you can see this one's going to be a lot easier to figure out. And now we just go ahead and simplify. So g of f of x is equal to 3x squared plus x plus 2. So that was very easy. All right, so there you go. Um, the composition of two functions. Okay, you can see how we have two different functions and we could put one inside the other or vice versa. Now let's go ahead and wrap this up. So in review, remember just a composition of two functions is a function operation where you simply evaluate one function with another. Okay, And it's really important that you're able to find out these uh, composition of two functions and they're going to play an integral role when we study function inverses. Okay, Hope to see an example set. It's really important that we practice this. Good luck.